statistics they seem stacked against us don't they every time you look at the tv or scroll through your phone all you hear are the bad things selfish self-centered addicted broken a generation lost beyond reach bad news on every street corner but we don't believe in the odds we believe in the life the hope the future of this city we believe in the one the potential the statistics broken and the lives changed. We don't believe in statistics because we believe in the good news. so glad you're joining us for youth online this is one of the moments where it's okay for me to talk to myself because i'm actually talking to you and i hope you're doing well on this lovely day this lovely evening we're starting to get longer evenings we're starting to get better weather and i hope you're doing well in whatever week of lockdown that this is this is a very special week of youth online and we're going to go about it in a different way than we have maybe for the past number of weeks so this is what i need you to do i need you to stay engaged because tonight is actually going to be a much shorter week of youth online because we're going to be doing something very special at the end and we want you to be a part of it one thing i've always said is that we want you when you come into youth not to leave the same way you came in not to come in on a friday even when we're together in person and head back into school on monday and be like nothing encouraged me nothing motivated me or nothing challenged me we want you to get one of those things within your life. Maybe it's encouragement or maybe it's challenge, but those are things that are gonna develop you into the person you are going to be in the future. And this week we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. So we're only gonna be doing one worship song, but just as I've said every week, I want to encourage you to stay engaged, to turn off your apps, to log out of all the other stuff that's on your phone that could distract you, whack off the TV, maybe call a friend and worship together, but let's engage with what God has to say to us this evening. I really believe that the message I'm gonna bring tonight, although it's short, is gonna impact you, and hopefully, through impacting you, will impact others. We're gonna see it straight after worship, one worship song tonight, but just because it's one worship song, let's engage even more than we would if we had three or four songs, and I will chat to you straight after. God bless.
time of worship encouraged you although it's short we want to remind you those words are truths that you can apply to your life and as i said before this is going to be a much shorter week of youth online because we're going to be doing something a bit special this week for you and for people in your life so make sure you stay tuned stay engaged i'm going to be bringing a very short message but i really believe that it's going to encourage you and motivate you heading into the week ahead and heading into the weeks and months even after lockdown, when we leave lockdown, I really hope that this message is something that you can cling on to. And I hope it encourages you as much as it has been encouraging me over the past number of weeks. And it's actually something I was gonna bring a couple of months ago within youth and then decided not to. But just before I get into the message, a couple of things I want to keep you in the loop about. Number one, uh, we have church online this Sunday, as always, half 10, you can find it on YouTube or on Facebook. Just type in St. Mark's Church Dublin. If you're from St. Mark's South, just type in St. Mark's South on Instagram or St. Mark's Tala if you're from our Tala location. And we'll be able to plug you into everything that's happening throughout the St. Mark's family. We are one family all across the city. Rather than being in one room, we're in many rooms across the city, which is a really exciting opportunity for a lot of us. The second thing is tomorrow, we have episode three of the Good News Guide dropping on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. So make sure you tune in. It's been a great couple of weeks. So episode one, we had Pastor Sean Malarkey. Last week, we had Jack Lawless, Peter Taylor, and we also were co-hosted by Danny Bala. 
and then this week we have Pastor Daniel Malone joining us from all the way over in Cape Town, South Africa, which is going to be great. We're going to be talking about servants and leaders, and this is one for everybody, so I really want to encourage you. Tune into that tomorrow. We'll be releasing it tomorrow evening. You know, one thing that's been really noticeable over the past couple of weeks is the feeling of hopelessness. I think I've realized now more than ever that people really do rely on their situation, their career, their friends, their finances for joy. And we're continuing on in our influence series tonight. We're actually going to close it tonight and start a new series next week. But what I want to talk to you tonight about is joy. You know, one thing that I've noticed in my life is that joy is something that's contagious. I'm really good friends with a guy called Mark McCann. Some of you know him. And one thing that I always can say about Mark is that Mark is always filled with joy. He's the most funny guy in the room. He's the most friendly guy in the room. He's the most ambitious when it comes to games and activities in the room. And that's why he's my best mate. He's actually going to be my best man at my wedding because he's filled with joy. I surround myself with people like Mark because when Mark is filled with joy, his joy often spills over into my life because joy is contagious. I would actually say that there's a couple of things that are contagious. Never mind the coronavirus. Fear is contagious. Fear is contagious. Fear can be passed from one person to the next. One thing that I've noticed is even when I'm watching the news, every night I can see the fear in the newscasters and sometimes that puts fear within me. Sometimes I'm watching the Late Late Show with my parents, which is something I never did before because I go to youth on Friday nights and I've never seen the Late Late Show in the past seven years. But one thing that I've noticed is when Ryan Tuberty says something and I notice a bit of fear in him, it can sometimes be passed on to me. But I want to tell you something that's even more powerful than fear. Joy. Joy is contagious. Have you ever seen a video where someone posts on YouTube a video of a baby laughing and the baby's just in knots of laughter? breaking its heart laughing. You don't know what it's laughing at. Sometimes it's stupid and it's like the dad went boo or it's looking at a dog and it's just breaking its heart laughing. And then you realize you're looking at your phone screen and you have a smile on your face as well and you look like an absolute dope because you're sitting in your bedroom by yourself laughing at what the baby's laughing at. Joy is contagious. But joy in our world is often dictated and decided by situations, circumstances financial circumstances, educational circumstances, social circumstances, family circumstances. And so often when that's all pulled away from us, like it has been for the past couple of weeks, our joy becomes uneven. You know, I really do believe that joy comes from God. And there's a big difference between the joy the world offers and the joy that Jesus offers. You see, the joy that the world offers is based on situation. But the joy that Jesus offers is based on salvation. Situation and salvation. What does salvation mean? Well, it means that Jesus came and died so that he could save us. Salvation is Jesus saving us. The one thing about situations is situations do change. We've seen that so much recently. But salvation doesn't change. And the gift that God gives us doesn't change. I think a great example of that is Paul. Paul, formerly known as Saul, to give you a bit of context quickly, Saul was somebody who not only was anti-Christian, but so anti-Christian that he killed Christians. They said that he was one of the most feared persecutors of Christians that existed at the time. He was involved in the murdering of the first Christian martyr, whose name was Stephen. And then all of a sudden you read as you go through the New Testament, this transformation that occurs in Saul's life. And there's such a transformation that God actually gives him a new name. And that name is Paul. The interesting thing about Paul is he goes as being one of the most feared people in the time of the New Testament and then becomes the most influential person that a lot of Christian people would identify as writing most of the New Testament that we read today. Paul also went from being the persecutor to the persecuted. What does persecution mean? Well, that means that if you're a Christian, you're enemy 101. Your life is constantly at risk. The things that you stand for are dangerous in the eyes of other people and they're going to try to end your life or maybe in today's world put you down and slag you and tease you about those things but at that time it was life or death and if you read in the new testament paul can list off the things that he's gone through 
He's been thrown in prison. He's been beaten. He's been chained. He's been shipwrecked. He's been attacked by people he loved. He's been sick. He's been bitten by vipers. A whole variety of things have happened to Paul. And yet one thing he constantly says is he will rejoice. How? How from a prison cell can he have a joy within him? So prevalent and so obvious that he would write the New Testament. How could that happen? How could a guy who's in a prison cell, and not a prison cell like Mount Joy, not a prison cell where they give you an Xbox One or you have a nice bed, you're talking the worst of the worst, filled with rats and disease. Some people would even say there was sewage water up to their necks in some of these prison cells. It says that at times him and his friend Silas would even sing songs of worship because their joy didn't depend on their situation. I want to read you a verse and if you're taking notes, I'd love if you wrote this down. And it's from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading from verse 12. And it says this, Paul's joy that Christ is preached. It says from verse 12, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped me to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with self-ambition, not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice. For I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. He's sitting in jail he's rejoicing he's sitting in jail and his joy is contagious because it's rooted in Christ winning the battle in his life he's sitting in prison and he's influential it says in one of those verses that people are being encouraged and their fear is diminishing because of the joy he has within him because he's rejoicing in Christ and he's defending the good news. It's funny, I've been trying to train my mind the past couple of weeks, and I wanna close with this, but I've been trying to train my mind and focusing on the good news in my life. I really don't believe that it was chance that at the start of this year, the topic and the theme and the vision that we had was that we believed that there was good news for everyone, everywhere. That means not only the people who attend our church or attend our youth group, but for everybody out there as well. Little did we know that the world would cling on to good news now more than they ever have before. I don't think it's by chance that the theme for our new conference was choose joy. God does things that prepares our heart for trial. He prepares us in advance for the things that are going to come at us. I don't think it's by chance that the last message that we spoke about at youth when we were all together was making the choice to be selfless and not selfish. It's funny. While Paul was in isolation, he not only influenced the people in the prison cell, but he influenced the churches all across the land and in other lands. And he's also, over 2,000 years later, encouraging the church of today. Not because of anything he did, but because of everything that Jesus did. Are you defending good news right now? Or are you wallowing in bad news? Are you being selfless in this season? Or are you being selfish in this season? Are you finding your joy in the things the world offers you? Maybe the, the way the lockdown is being eased. Maybe the way they're announcing some streaks of positivity. Or is your joy rooted in what God has always given you and everything that's been made accessible to you through it all? These are questions that are going to stand to you as you get older. These are questions that are going to stand to me. I'm also aware that on Facebook, there's some members of our wider church who are watching this as well. This is as applicable to you as it is to us as a youth ministry, to everybody who's watching on Instagram and YouTube. It's as applicable to you. But you know what the sad reality of the situation is? Our friends don't have that joy. 
And yeah, they might look happy. But then when a child like the one we're in right now lands on their doorstep, it's chaos. It's despair. It's hopelessness. You could be the only person who brings joy into their life. And that's why we're doing this tonight. Tonight, we're ending youth online a bit early. Because this is a moment where you can practically practice being selfless. You can practically practice bringing joy into someone else's life. You can practically practice defending the good news and bringing not only a lack of fear, but also an abundance of joy into someone's life. So we're going to end youth right here. And instead of the normal response that we usually do, the response is this. We're going to be starting a quiz at 8.20 p.m. on Zoom. And if you want access to that Zoom call, we would love if you DM'd us on either Facebook or on Instagram. St. Mark City Youth is our username on both of those platforms and say, I want to be added to the quiz. But for the next couple of minutes, we're giving you a chance to call, text, WhatsApp, FaceTime, that person who's on your heart and saying, hey, listen, do you want to do a quiz? It's not a Bible quiz. We're not going to overwhelm them. We just want to bring some good news into their life. One thing that I've realized in my life is sometimes we show Jesus in what we do more so than what we say. And tonight, we're going to show Jesus in what we do. How are these people so happy in the midst of this? How are they having so much fun in the midst of all this chaos? Why? Because our joy is rooted in Jesus. And that's my response to you. Maybe you're someone who's just clicked on this video. Our response for you is that we would love to send you a digital copy of our good news guide. It's a 14 day guide to all things good news. That good news that is rooted in Jesus. That joy that is rooted in Jesus. Maybe you've been attending our youth group for a couple of months but you never got to get your hands on our good news guide. We would love if you messaged us and we'd be able to send you a digital copy of the good news guide and get that to you as quickly as we possibly can. Again, either message us at St. Mark's City Youth on Facebook or Instagram or email youth at stmarks.ie. But for now, for the next couple of minutes, we're going to give you the next couple of minutes, 10, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is, to message your mates and get them onto this quiz. The sad reality of it is I'm going to win this quiz. That's just the, going to be the result of it because I don't lose these things. But our situations aren't dictated by our circumstance. It's dictated by our salvation. And we want to introduce that good news to everyone, everywhere. Amen. 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 That means I'm talking to all those people who've been commenting on Instagram just below this video. Message your mate. Get them on the call. They're going to lose the quiz anyway because I'm taking part in the quiz and that's just how it goes when Josh is a part of the game. Or maybe they could win. Who knows? We're going to be giving out two months of Disney Plus on top of a couple of other prizes that we didn't want to publicise too publicly because they're just so good. But make sure you get in touch with us. We'll send you the secure code to get into the call. All of the calls are secure and safe in case your parents are wondering. And until we see you in a couple of minutes, prepare your minds to get absolutely demolished in the quiz because I'm about to win. But on top of that, make sure you reach out to us. We'd love to introduce you to the good news that Jesus has for you. So right now, message your mates, message your family members. If they're a teenager, this is for them. And until we see you on Zoom, have a great one. We'll see you in a little bit. God bless.